Adam White here, front office sports, another edition of uh, Shot Callers. And we have Scott Shirley, CEO, co-founder of Pledge It. And Scott, it's been a pretty good couple, last couple of years for you guys. Stadia, the way you're moving and, and, and your growth. But, you know, Pledge It is, is years in the making, right, from your background. Yeah, I mean, like any overnight success, right? Um, you know, the, the story really begins a couple years ago whenever uh, Devin still was playing with the Bengals. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He called me to tell me his daughter Leah had been diagnosed with cancer. And I've long had the belief that uh, obviously athletes have a platform, right? And that's not just pro athletes. That's any athlete walking down the hall of the school or, you know, uh, whatever. And, and they all want to do good. So, somewhere inside, they all want to do good. Uh, but oftentimes, they don't know how. They don't know how to take action. They don't have the tools. They don't have the direction. Uh, so I pitched the idea to Devin to run a sack cancer campaign. Uh, where Bengals fans could pledge for every sack, and, and we created Pledge It for him to, to do that and, and engage and mobilize the Bengals fans. And it was a tr tremendous success and, and really just kind of took off from there. And, and as you look from what it was then to what it is now, you know, what is that overnight success or what is that evolution that, you know, look like? Yeah, so obviously, you know, we're built by athletes for athletes and the origin story, you know, we literally built the product to, to meet Devin's needs, to solve a problem that he had uh, that's shared by, you know, at this point for us, hundreds of athletes. We have over 600 pro athletes that use the product the same way that Devin did. Uh, but for us, the, the evolution was building out this scalable DIY platform where thousands of high school and youth teams and, and really the athlete inside of all of us can take that voice, take that platform, um, and use the power of sport for social good. And when it comes to your platform versus other crowdfunding platforms, as you look at just the evolution of those and kind of the growth, what's the, at least in your opinion, key differentiator in the fact that like you're actually having to do stuff? Like You have to live up to something. Yeah, I actually think it's less of a product feature and more of a kind of a psychological feature where because the athlete is, is the core to our business and, and we were athletes, uh, the idea of performance-based uh, fundraising is, is built around that idea and, and people are emotionally invested in the outcome um, whenever they make a pledge uh, based on home run or three-pointer, sack, whatever. Um, and it's because of that emotional investment uh, that they're engaged throughout the entire campaign and that creates this really cool, unique, authentic content and this relationship between the athlete and the, uh, and the fan. And, and now as we've seen a lot of this shift, right, especially from a marketing standpoint, uh, just read something today that even though there's going to be an economic recession downturn, that CMOs are expecting to have more money on their bottom line. Uh, but a lot of that, and we've seen the shift, is more of a cause marketing standpoint and aligning with things like this. And I know you guys, NFLPA, New Balance, uh, American Cancer Society, how has it gone from just being the athletes doing something for themselves and like wanting to, to make an impact to now athletes and brands getting together and doing it for more than just Yeah, one? I think uh, New Balance is a great example of that. Uh, again, with it being athlete driven, um, there's an authenticity that comes with that. And in that case, New Balance, uh, as a good partner, uh, wanted to, to provide the tool to their athletes, to their community, um, to take action towards something that they were passionate about. Not just Cookie and his fight with cancer, but in, in the teammates and the friends that Cookie had around the league that wanted to join his fight and do it in a way that was, was engaging of the fans. And, and um, you know, it's really, the, the cool thing about it for us is that it, it's core to who we are and it works so well for what they want to do as a brand. Um, it's just such a natural, natural progression for yeah. us. And, and what about the other brands? How do you kind of see that shaking out? Or just brands in general, like, what are they coming to you? How are you advising them, right? Because I'm assuming they're like, hey, we want to do this. And you're like, oh, well, maybe let's do this. It might be better. Yeah, I mean, like you said, cause marketing is is a critical piece moving forward for CMOs, especially as millennials age into more more buying power and, and everything. And, and so many of these brands are already activating at the intersection of, of, of sport. Um, you know, so, so bringing cause into that conversation, you know, they have, uh, you know, they have their athlete ambassadors, you know, like the American Cancer Society and the three point challenge, the coaches versus cancer, where they work with high profile basketball coaches. It's a way for them to actually engage people to take, take a real and tangible action. Um, you know, uh, the dunk cancer, dunk on cancer uh, campaign that Kevin O'Connor ran from the ringer around the NBA finals. It actually changes the way fans interact with the game. I mean, if you followed that conversation on Twitter, uh, there were over 35 million impressions about his campaign during the NBA Finals. There's people saying, I'm not a fan of this team or that team, but I'm watching the Finals because I want to, you know, I want to beat cancer. I want to help Kevin, Kevin's dad beat cancer. So it's really cool to see how you can pull in um, kind of a different uh, fan into the, into the game um, or, or have them experience the game in a little bit of a different way. Uh, because of, of the cause marketing behind yeah, it. It's almost like they're bought in. I mean, realistically, they are bought in, right? But it's, yeah. a, it's another layer of, 
of being bought in. And I guess too, it, you know, you've seen this product grow, you've seen it develop as you're looking at the end of Q, you know, end of Q3, yeah. beginning of Q4, 2019 into 2020. What's the pledged story going forward? Like, what is it that you guys are, are building? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it's the athlete in, in all of us. Uh, you know, we had a 14 year old kid who raised $26,000 for his neighbor's mom who's fighting breast cancer. We had a campaign launch on the way up here. Um, you know, somebody who's going to climb a mountain for 36 hours, um, you know, for some cause that they're passionate about, you know, all the way to the, to the pro athletes that are doing what they do. And, and being able to bring brands alongside of that because of the authentic storytelling and, and that the level of engagement that we have, um, you know, we're, we're just really excited about what the future looks like. They're only, I'm assuming, just tapping the top of the iceberg, right? There's probably a lot more there. I yeah. mean, for you, like, what's... What's the ideal situation, right? Is, is it you have someone who comes to you from a team side and a player side and they bring you an idea and then you're like, hey, we have a brand that we can match or, or they come to you, com, com, you know, com, together? Yeah, it, it can happen anyway. I mean, the, the dream for us is that, that every athlete, you know, whether you're a pro, high school youth, or, you know, you or I, we're putting the product in their hands to change the world um, in the way that they're most passionate about doing so. Um, and then with that, you know, the brands have their ambassadors and they might have an idea or they might, there might be an urgent response call, you know, uh, like when Clay Thompson or, uh, you know, James Harden did the, the hurricane relief last year in the NBA and he did that alongside of Adidas uh, with every assist that he had, it was to, to assist Houston. Um, you know, so really cool brand um, ideas and brand activations like that. And like you said, even, even the PA, I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, Part of their their activation, part of their celebration of the, the good work that people are doing, is actually amplifying that through through something like Pledget. And now it gets the athletes talking about the PA. So even even treating the PA as a brand and promoting the good work that they do and they encourage. I mean, it, it brings more visibility um, to an organization that athletes obviously are aware of, but they're not necessarily out there promoting or talking about in the same way. And and just to be able to bring brands into those conversations that are athlete driven. Um, it's it's just it's really cool to see. Would you have imagined you guys were here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have I have big dreams, yeah. I have big visions, and and that's been something that I've I've always been chasing. But uh, I never know what it's going to look like at any given point. But I'm excited about where we are, and I'm excited about where we're going.